Devero touches Lee Williamson. You're in Inglewood, Colorado, watching Mount High Sports TV. Sports fan, have you ever wondered what it would be like to hit a home run, to pitch a no-hitter, or to compete inside one of the world's most famous sports arenas? At Mile High Sports, we certainly have, and that's exactly why we asked a handful of local sports figures, what's it like? Our very old Daniel Mormon set out to answer that very question. From Ubaldo Jimenez to George Carl, Mormon uncovered the intimate details involved in some of the most amazing feats in sports. In talking to Daniel Mormon about his quest to answer the question, what's it like, I came across one story that was both interesting and inspiring. It's the story of Denver's very own Devero Williamson. At 42 years old, Williamson is still a professional boxer. And in April, he did the unthinkable. He became the heavyweight title contender once again. What do you remember leading up to the fight? It was, a, it was a huge fight for me because at the time of my life, uh, I hadn't fought in 16 months. I took a guy who was uh, 19 or 20 and two, so he had a winning record. He's one of the upcoming heavyweights. Uh, I took the fight on a short notice, about three and a half weeks. Um, I was so excited about it because it gives me a chance to kind of showcase my talent. Before the fight, how much did you know about your opponent, Mike? Is it Mike Marone? Mike Marone. I, I didn't know very much about him. Uh, I think we got a tape about, I don't know, maybe like eight days before we were about to leave. I would say he was a little bit sassy because he's 25 years old. You know, it's like I know it's like to be a 25 year old man. You, you think you 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 run the world or you know you got everything going in, in, in your way, and it was uh, I was very very happy to to win this fight. After knocking out Michael Marone, a fighter who's 17 years younger, Williamson is back in the gym. But the time spent training isn't just for him. For several years now, Williamson has been training some of Denver's fittest residents. And just recently, he has moved his training sessions into the new and improved Touch 'em Up Gym in Inglewood. One, two. One, two, three. Hey, hey, hey. Vera, when did you begin training people from a fitness standpoint? Robin, it's been, I don't know, it's been a number of years now. We, uh, we've been doing this for, I don't know, since 2002, um, with different people, uh, the common folks, uh, just really want to learn how to uh, understand some of the, the basic uh, fundamentals of boxing, um, some of the techniques, uh, and they've just been using it for different things. Um, you know, showing people how to probably, how to hit the speed bag, or, or the speed bag, or then the heavy bags. Um, sometimes would you know, you have the, um, the uppercut bag, and how sometimes you punch it, it looks like it's an uppercut bag, so you don't wanna go up under it. You just wanna, almost as if I'm putting my fist on the, my opponent's chest, and that way that I won't miss it. And I wanna stop right here in my nose or my forehead, so I don't go beyond. Because if I throw a punch and I miss, it costs, it, it costs you so much energy to miss a punch and then try to, to bring it back. This bag right here is called the double end bag. It's kind of a, a reaction bag as you're moving side to side. You just don't want to have your head in the same spot when you throw a punch. Sometimes you punch a guy and you, your head is right here, he can punch you back. So you're here and just keep your head out of the center. Here, here. And this right here, this little ball right here, it keeps you going the whole time you're breathing. So it's different, different, um, different uh, um, things we use here at the boxing gym at Touch My Boxing. Of course, we, you know, we have the, the good old hula hoop thing that we, we work, you know what I mean? So we know, as a kid, you punch, remember you using... Can you punch and do that the same time? <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> but no matter what Williamson gets from his training sessions with others, the privilege of competing and the thrill of victory still reigns supreme. Walk us through the knockout punch on Brown. Robin, well, I mean, it was um, it was kind of a, a barrage of punches. I remember the knockout was in round seven. I started letting myself go, and and and, and some of those punches are starting to work now. Some of the combinations are working a little bit better, and pretty soon that 
I did something, I hit him with a, a, a flurry of punches, like a one, two, three, or something like that, and he wobbled. When he wobbled, I can see that he was fading a little bit. And so my energy starts soaring up, and I wind up throwing uh, different combinations. I think the combination that really got him out was um, like a one, four, a jab, an uppercut, and then a one, two. The guy went down, I mean, he, he, he fell like a, he fell like a lawn chair. Are you gonna go after the heavyweight belts again? And do you think about that a lot? You know, Robin, the heavyweight championship of the world is still within my grasp. It really is, it truly is. At 42 years old, it still is within my grasp. And like I said, in less than 60 days from now, I'll be 43, and it feels amazing to, uh, to be in a hunt again. And I think that I have a, a realistic shot of, of, of becoming the heavyweight champion of the world. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. You can count on that. You can take that to the bank. And my money is certainly on DeVarrell. For more stories on what it's like, grab a copy of the July issue of Mile High Sports Magazine. I'm Robin Carlin. Stay tuned for more as Doug Ottawill sits down with Broncos legend Rod Smith on this edition of Mile High Sports TV.